Welcome to Bath Talks with Jim Bruce. Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of Bath Talks. Today I'm going to talk to you about why I decided to be a stand-up comedian. I've been a stand-up comic in one form or another for multiple decades now, and in that time I've made hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Uh, I love doing stand-up. I remember the first time I ever got paid to do stand-up, it felt uh, so much like thievery. It just was just a beautiful moment just to have somebody hand you money to do something that you absolutely love to do and to have them thank you as they're handing you money. It was an incredible, incredible moment. And I still, every time I get paid to do stand-up, I feel like I'm the luckiest son of a gun in the world. Let me tell you how I first fell in love with stand-up. I actually knew I wanted to be a stand-up in grade school. And the reason I knew I wanted to be a stand-up was a grade school talent show. So I went to Johnny White uh, School in Tucson, Arizona, and they had a talent show. And now, I don't think I necessarily have a lot of talents. I just don't. Like, I can't play an instrument, I can't dance, uh, I can't sing, and I can't really do a lot of things. Gymnastics can't do much of anything. But I thought, well, I could do magic. I could probably learn to do magic because I really wanted to be in the talent show. So I tried to think of something I could do and I thought, I'll do a magic act. So my father drove me to a magic shop in Tucson, Arizona, where we bought about five cheap tricks. By the way, if you get a chance to go see cheap trick, go ahead and do that. But we got these five tricks that were very easy to learn. One of them was a cup and a ball trick. It had three colored cups and a little ball. And the idea was you'd go, you'd put the cup over the ball and you'd move it around and you'd go, where's the ball? And the ball's gone. And it's a cool little trick. And God knows that if I tried to do it now, I couldn't do it because I'm not good at magic. And I had a, the classic ring trick where you make the rings come across, away from each other. And I had a magic knot trick where you make a knot disappear from a rope. So those are the tricks and two other tricks I don't remember. Uh, but I was excited about doing the uh, talent show. So I practiced my tricks, was not very good at them. But what I was good at was thinking of funny things to say while I did the tricks. And I remember one of my jokes was, I said, I learned this rope trick from an old shaman. And if the, and if the trick doesn't work, he's not going to get any older. And it got a big laugh, which I need a pretty good joke for a kid, I think. So I did, did this uh, joke, got a big laugh. I was silly. People enjoyed me at the end. Lots and lots of applause, and I thought, oh, God, that was amazing. What an incredible feeling to be in front of an audience. I would like to feel that way again. And that feeling made me think, I like stand-up, but that's not what hooked me. Here's what hooked me. The following year, by the way, I was probably nine years old, and I think that's a key detail to this story. The following year... They had another talent show, and I thought, well, people love the magic act. They're going to love me doing some old magic. So I decided that I would do a new magic act. It would be the return of the amazing gem. And so I learned new tricks. And this time, my dad didn't take me to pick up new tricks because by that time, my mom and dad had really gotten into drinking. So nobody really was available to take me to the magic shop. So I went and got a book on magic and tried to learn tricks. So I just got a book and put the tricks together myself. So as bad as the tricks were the year before, these ones were awful. Because these ones involved like cardboard boxes and milk cartons and just stuff around the house to make your own magic. And of course, also I'm not good at it or patient. So I picked out five new magic tricks and I thought of new jokes and I was like so excited to do this and I went to the talent show and now again understand I was nine years old and I nine-year-old boy got up at a talent show filled with parents lots and lots of parents and they booed me they booed me <laughs> they were boo get off the stage child who's trying to feel accepted boo 
They hated me. I just completely bombed. It was a, so the pre previous year, I got the experience of what it might be like to be a stand-up who was getting great laughs. But the next year, I got the experience of what it felt like to bomb. And again, I kind of want to talk to those parents and go, Hey, uh, you were bombing. You were uh, booing a child. Did you know that? Did you know that you were uh, heckling a child? But that was actually what made me want to be a stand-up. The success was cool, but the failure made me want it so bad because I wanted to get back to that feeling of having a good set. And I think if I had never had a bad set, I probably wouldn't have fallen in love with stand-up. It was really the bad set that made me go, oh man, I don't like this, but I sure do like the other thing. Oh, I want that other thing. I want to feel what it is like to get laughs from an audience. So anytime I've bombed, I've learned a lot. And the only reason any comic gets good is because of the bombing. The bombing is absolutely necessary. And, and it's, I think it's the thing that makes you just desperate and, and work really hard to write your little jokes. So that's why I became a stand-up comic was because parents are surprisingly cruel. <laughs> booing, literally, by the way, booing a child. Ah. <sighs> And I will grant you, uh, most plays by kids are terrible, and most kids who play instruments are terrible, but you, you shouldn't boo them. That's my parental advice for you. If you see a child performing, don't boo them, unless you want to give them the hunger. Maybe you should boo them. Maybe that'll be your good deed. So how about this is your good deed today? Go to somebody's band concert and go, hey! Guy playing the piccolo. You suck! Alright. Anyway, that's my story. I hope you enjoyed it. And the nice thing is, even if you didn't, I can't hear you booing through the camera. I'm going to enjoy my bath. Bath Talks is a Jim Bruce production. Bubbles provided by Amori Arce. If you enjoyed Bath Talks, click subscribe.